In this presentation, we will discuss some introductory GIS concepts. We will go over a brief overview of what GIS is. Remember, GIS refers to Geographic Information System. We will also discuss an overview of the DHIS2 GIS module. And then we will introduce some basic GIS terms. So what is GIS? So GIS stands for Geographic Information System. These systems allow you to store, analyze, and present spatial data. We will go through a couple different examples in this presentation. The DHIS2 GIS differs from some full GIS suites, so why should we use it? Well, within the DHIS2 GIS, we can map our health facilities and other resources, we can look at features such as accessibility, plan new clinics, and plan our different activities. The GIS application is also a nice complement to charts and tables for understanding your data. This also allows you to highlight data geographically for decision makers. In particular, the DHIS2 GIS is ideal for agencies, departments, or organizations that are not using a full GIS suite. So one concept that we want to introduce when we're discussing GIS is the concept of layers. A GIS layer is a visual separation of mapped information according to its theme. Alternatively, we can think of this as a slice of the geographic reality in a particular area. Layers can be stacked on top of each other and combined into a single visual analysis. For example, we can start with a satellite image. And then we can add additional layers on top of this. This can be other features such as health facility locations or health data. We can also think of different slices of the geographic reality. For example, taking on certain land masses, then placing on rivers and lakes. Next, we put on the roads, etc. Let's take a look at some examples of layers within DHIS2. This is what we refer to as a boundary layer within DHIS2. This maps the boundary of a particular location within DHIS2. We can see here that the districts of trading land have been mapped. This is an administrative layer referred to as the boundary layer in this case. We can then add in the facilities on top of this boundary layer. You can see the boundaries of the districts. Within those districts, we also have the different facility types that are available. That is considered an additional layer on top of the boundary layer. As another example, we have what we refer to as a thematic layer. These thematic layers allow us to visually represent our data on a map. We also have what we refer to as event layers. These allow us to visualize individual events on the map. For example, I can map individual malaria cases if I want to track them to their individual location. We can create combinations of these layers. In this example, I have a boundary layer, which shows my administrative boundaries of my districts. I then have the thematic layer, which shows the data of these districts. This is finally combined with the event layer, which is placed on top of both the thematic and the boundary layers. We can then look at all of this data together on the map. Let's also introduce some GIS terms that you should become familiar with. The first term we will refer to is features. These can be any of the geographical map objects. This can include such features such as a facility, a district, or a river on the map itself. We also have polygons. Polygons are a map feature that represent an area. For example, your administrative boundaries of your country, provinces, or districts. We also have point data. These are map features that represent coordinates. This could be, for example, a facility, a village, a case of a particular disease, etc. Lastly, we have spatial data. Spatial data is information that identifies the geographic location of different features. As an example, 
spatial data will define where the points lie on a map. So now that we've introduced some GIS concepts, as well as the DHIS2 GIS application, let's go ahead and show how we can use the DHIS2 GIS.